morning, morning, morning. It's uh, it's about eight thirty in the morning. Um, there's no sunrise. I did get up a little bit earlier to see if anything would come of it, and uh, nothing has. So I'm out in the New Forest. I'm just leaving Abbotswell up by um, Fogham. And I'm just heading towards Fritham on the main path. And I'm just going to see what I can see because it is beautifully misty. Um, it's minus three. So I've got the base layer on for the first time um, this time of year. And then I've got a mid layer. And then I've got my um, big down jacket. So I'm nice and toasty. Even when I set off, I was nice and toasty. Um, but look at this. You've got birds just hopping around in there. Look at that tree just over there, separated by the mist. And there's beautiful frost. I don't know if you can see that on the uh, gorse. There's some lovely frost. That's sort of set in, so nice foreground interest. Cobwebs as well, beautiful cobwebs. I just think it's one of those, it's harder now because once the fireworks have gone off with autumn, it just seems like you're left with no inspiration and it's really hard to get out. I know that feeling, but trust me, if you just charge up all your batteries the night before, pack your bag, have it all ready and then just all you got to do is just get up, make it as easy as possible. If you feel like you've got a lot more to do then you're more likely to stay in bed. So yeah by all means pack your bag ready, get your gear ready. I like to pack my, fold my clothes in a pile so I can just sneak off in a different room so I don't wake my wife up and then uh yeah, make myself a coffee and slip out the door. So, I'm not sure what I'm looking for today. I just know that it's misty and it's quite rare in itself. So, I'm just going to walk around, see if anything takes my interest. And possibly walk away with a photo. I think you just got to get that first one in the bag and then you you feel more at ease because you know you've got something. Um, but yeah, enough waffling on. Let's uh, crack on with the journey. See you in a bit. I think I found something that I quite like here, but I'm just going to be a bit wary of where I'm treading at the moment seems to be making the frost a little bit darker. You can tell where I've come from, look. So I don't want to walk into my scene. So I've come round the back and I quite like the look of that gnarly little twig there. I'm sure if I can get low enough, get some of that white behind it, it would probably make a really nice black and white. I might even go this way because you can see more, more of it. Look at that. So interesting. It's got some mushrooms growing on the underside of it. So I'm hoping they show up. And then it's got a cobweb just under here. It looks amazing. I'm going to see if I can get that in. I might try and include some foreground leading up to it maybe. Depends on if there's lines leading up to it to help it. Um, but on its own, it's, it's an image in itself. So let's just work the scene a little bit. I'm gonna start far out and then move in because I don't want to trample the ground around it and then you can see I've walked into it. So I'm gonna move slowly to it. Right, let's set up. So this is my first shot. Um, it's just pretty much straight on. It's in the middle. And I'm kind of hoping I put the horizon on the 
bottom third. I'm just hoping that it's just going to look nice on its own. It looks like it's a black and white image already. As you know, this is a white scene. So I'm expecting the histogram to be all up to the right hand side. So I've just flipped my camera around to portrait and I'm going to move it back a little bit because I've noticed something in the foreground and I'm going to bring the camera in so you can have a look. So these lovely frosty green things here I think they're called elf cups and the reason for that is if I can get a little bit closer you should be able to see that they sort of resemble a long stem with a cup on the top and I don't think I've seen it, it looks so good it's got lovely frost on it on the edges on the brims of the the cups on the top so I'm going to see if I can get that in the foreground and then leading up to my tree but I'm just worried I might make the tree a little bit smaller because the foreground might be a bit more the star of the show which I'm not sure it's going to work very well with my star of the show at the back so it's a make or break this one but frost in the foreground always looks good in a lot of images so it's worth a go you're here take the shot and just see if it looks good on the big screen when you get back all right let's get that one so i've moved around a bit and I found something that I really like and I think I'm starting to understand what I think I'm seeing. I've kind of like, um, I'm kind of seeing a deer shape in this tree. I'm kind of obsessed with it. Um, I've moved around, I've moved further back. I've got the telephoto on, I've now gone 70 to 200. I'm about, yeah, I'm 200 mil and I'm just closed in on the, subject itself and I'm just I'm separating all the individual branches as they go up so you can see none of the twigs are touching at the top but they just look like antlers and then the twig that's going out the front resembles the head and then the body it's almost like it's sitting down or something um, but it just my head is telling me there's another story in this shape so I'm taking it from here I'm on f14 um, I want a bit of the foreground in focus because it's 200 mil there's going to be more chances of things being out of focus of course I want the background out of focus you'll see there's a hedge behind it um, you can just about see it in the background of the shot if I drop the um, shutter speed if I up the shutter speed even you're more likely to see it what I do I'll turn this histogram off once I've got it right and then I'll bring you in to have a little look so there's there's the distance that tiny little thing there I'm interested in there's just nothingness all around it and on the back of the camera I've closed in as much as I could and look at that look at that shape it's so unusual I'm not sure if you're seeing what I'm seeing but when a shape resembles something you're familiar with it's worth photographing in my opinion um, what I'm worrying about though is this, it seems weighted, it's sort of like a diagonal, but it's weighted a bit more on this side. So centre might be a little bit further that way, obviously. But um, I'm going for that. I'm quite pleased with that. And I'm just focusing on the base and then taking the shot. And it, 
what I would do, just zoom in, just to check that the most important part of your image is all nice and sharp. And that looks great. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Look at those twigs at the top. None of them are really crossing over each other. And I like that. There's nice separation up there between the twigs. It just looks like beautiful artwork. And that's what we're trying to do, isn't it? We're trying to produce art from an image. So yeah, I'm gonna put that one up on a screen. I'm not sure if it's a square format or if I would choose to use the whole thing as a portrait. But yeah, there's that. And I'll just put that up on the screen for you now. I'm quite glad I stuck around there to stand back and take the shot. Honestly, I just started packing up and I just thought, I've not tried the telephoto lens and that could make it more interesting because it zooms in on the subject and separates it a bit better than a wide angle. Um, so I just stuck it on and then I started standing back and looking at what, what I first saw in that image when I approached. It just caught my eye. Something was there, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And I just walked around for a bit and then a shape started to form and it resembled something. And uh, yeah, I just got into my photographic momentum if you like my inspiration started to come out and then I bagged the shot and it's just making me think I want more I want more so yeah I'm just walking further towards Fritham now the sun has just started to appear up in the sky but it's beautiful because it's so diffused and it's just so inspirational, honestly. If, it, if you think autumn is over, pick up your camera, shove it in your bag, grab your tripod, and just get out. Seriously, you will find things. Um, it's so uninspiring, isn't it? Once you've had that autumn and it's just blasted through, you just sort of like lose your motivation. What next? What can I do now? The forest is gonna be stripped bare. What can I do? And I am thinking about seascapes as well. So start looking at tide maps or tide charts and looking at OS maps because when the tide goes out and you've got revealing rocks and there's lines of them, um, try and line it up with the sunrise or something like that. Something that just makes it interesting. Um, so I'm gonna to work towards that probably next week but I'm in the moment now so I need to get my inspiration here and there's just so much it's so easy just to stop and take a picture of a bit of um, frost on a bit of bracken and on the ferns down here in the foreground and then you've got the gorse it's just so easy just to stop and take that and it's it's nice it's abstracty but there's a lot of that how do you make that more interesting? So, yeah, I've just noticed I might be the first one in this little bit because there's a lot of wildlife, a lot more than usual. So I might come across a deer or something. There's loads of robins that just hop into the path, natter, and then head back up into the tree and natter back at you. It's like they're shouting at you. Um, it's like, Um, yeah, it's just so bare up here. Look, look around me, look at this. But it's so nice, honestly, it's a good, 
if you've had a really busy week, it's a nice little reset. It's a beautiful little reset, getting yourself out in the wild. Oh, I'm absolutely loving it. Anyway, I might shove a little bit of B-roll in here and uh, just walk into the scenes. So I switch on when I see something of interest. For some reason, I've got in my head a tree on the end of a pinnacle. On a, if, you, if you can just about see it, there's a slope. If it had a tree on the top, I might go do it. Just a single tree. But um, yeah, don't get too fixed on things. Try to keep your mind open and keep walking into your scenes and then see if something crops up. I mean, I might just walk away with that one image. I hope not. I hope not. But um, yeah, just get a nice bit of hiking in as well while I'm at it. So yeah, onwards and upwards. I'll see you in a bit. This might be my second or third image. I'm not sure if I'm using all of them back there, but I'm not too far off the path here. And I've spotted this um, frozen over bit and it's got a lovely bit of gorse, uh, not gorse, sorry, heather in front of me. Obviously it's died off, but it's where the frost is latched on to the dying bits. It's looking really stunning. So I'm gonna see if I can get an image of it. What I'm doing is I'm using the background with the polarizer. So I've made the ice in the background quite dark. So it's like a beautiful framing on what I'm seeing in the foreground. And then I've got the nice white um, frosty heather in the background that kind of frames it again. So I'm hoping that works. Um, I'm on F16 because I want most of this foreground to be in focus and I'm very close as well. I'm about a foot and a half away from my subject. It's right here. I can almost touch it. So there you go, looking at the back. I've got the histogram there, keeping all the detail in. That's quite important. Now I should be aiming to the brighter end of the histogram, but I'm not. I'm actually trying to keep the shadows dark here because I think it will help make the image pop. So bear with me a minute, I'm just going to move the tripod back where it was again. There we go, that's what I'm going for. I'm trying to keep that nice little bit of um, heather in the frame there. I'm just gonna get rid of the histogram so you can see the whole image, there you go. So there's the heather and I've just made it nice and dark around here. And so you can see that polarizer working, watch this. Can you see it getting lighter, it loses the heather. And then when I bring it back round again, it makes it dark in the background. So it makes the heather pop a bit more. And again, lighter, takes the edge off that background ice. And it helps make that foreground heather pop. And it's just got a beautiful framing on it with the nice, I'm using this the shady side of it to help frame it. So yeah, it's nice. And just so you can see how far away I am from the path, check this out. It's right there. How crazy is that? I've had a few people stop and start talking to me, me being weird. But I just think if you're not 
if you're not putting the effort in to get the shot, like I changed the center column out for the shorter one so I can get lower. If you're not putting the effort in, you just think, ah, oh, I can't be bothered, then you you just won't get the image. I think you've just, you've got to make the effort to get the image. If you think something needs doing, do it. Anyway, I'll take a few more shots here and I'll put one up on the screen for you. So, here it is. That's cold. Oh, that's nice, refreshing. Anyway, we're gonna move on a little bit. Uh, the sun is pretty much showing itself now. So we're gonna move on, see if we can find something else. Otherwise I'm gonna start making my way back to the car. Okay, let's go. You can't come to the new forest and not get any photos of horses. <laughs> Something you've got to do. So I'm changing my shutter speed up to 400. And uh, I've got an uh, ISO of 200 to get that speed as well, because it doesn't matter, it's not going to be grainy. And I've gone for f5.6 on the uh, aperture. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of waiting for something to come together. I quite like these two horses over this side. They're facing each other, so they're looking into the image. So it keeps your interest. If they're looking at the image, it's not so good. <clears throat> so it's just a waiting game now, waiting for something to come into play. And um, there's a lonely one all the way over here. This looks good as well. He just stood there. Now, obviously I don't need the setting for landscape photography for this, I've had to change up. You have to. Um, the timer release on the camera, you have to flip that to single shot or multiple shot, whichever you feel is relevant to your situation. These are not fast moving images, they're not running. So I can take one shot at a time. Um, I, I really like the one, I really like the horse that's on its own, in the middle of uh, what looks like a clearing. They might have used um, controlled burning. It just looks so peaceful, just stood there in the middle of it like, I don't know, it's almost sending the wrong message, you burnt my home. You have to make a choice here as well, whether you want to include all the white space above them, or whether you want to include some of that interest in the foreground. It will be out of focus anyway, because I'm using f5.6 and I'm on a zoom, so it's almost, well, it's 105 mil actually, so I'm not using the full 200 mil. Yeah, I'm just gonna move around until I get a nice shot. One little horse I really like, I'm just gonna try and separate him or her. It's more likely to be a her. 
stallions aren't really out this time of year. So I don't know if I can show you it because so far away and this is a bit of a wide angle on the camera, but can you see that right the way over there? A horse on its own. Lovely sticks in the foreground, sticking up in the ground, from the ground even. I'm just gonna see if I can get a beautiful shot of it. Look at it, doesn't it look beautiful? A horse just stood there in the middle. There's a bird on a twig just in front of it. Yeah, this this is I've got to get something here. I don't want to get too close because it might disturb it. But look at that. How beautiful is that? Gotta do it. There's something a bit first world war about this. It's uh very sort of like no man's land landscape. I guess what you gotta think about is you don't want any trees or twigs crossing the face of the horse, the shape of the horse. You want to know it's a horse immediately by looking at the image. You don't want anything to distract you away from that. I think this needs to be central as well. Even though he's looking, if you get him too close to the, or her too close to the right hand side of the image, they'll be looking out of the image. So you've got to always think where the horse is facing. Right then, I'm going to start heading back. Um, really thoroughly enjoyed that. I really have. Uh, more than I thought I would. I honestly thought I wasn't going to get anything, but especially here, the road is closed up by um, the Fighting Cox pub. So I can't get through to the New Forest that way. That's my usual way. And I just had to sort of divert to Frogham and I decided to walk from there. But I just knew in my head it was a bit of a barren land. But there is stuff to be had out in a barren land, so it's just different. Um, yeah, so if you haven't already clicked on that like and subscribe, please do. It goes a long, long way. And uh, smash that bell if you want to be notified of my next video. And until then, and I hope I'll be up the uh, over by the sea. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.